I must say this is a growing area of work, um, you know, mental health and the internet and the fact that uh, people are facing, young people and women are facing a lot of bullying and harassment online. And I must say this is one of the first studies that I've seen in, the, in this region. And I would encourage people who are interested uh, in, in looking at it to contact uh, the person who conducted the study and presented. I'm sorry for the quality of the video, uh, but clearly the person was very passionate about uh, the study that she had done on mental health of women who were facing harassment. Um, I'm going to just open the floor for a last set of questions. Um, we have uh, a study from Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Myanmar, Bangladesh, uh, and Malawi, and we are, we got if there are any burning questions or any responses, um, please feel free to, uh, before I close the session. So I think there's probably a lot of common themes coming through some of the presentations. Some of the health topics are slightly differently. I wonder if a couple of the speakers would like to comment on what they think MSF needs to do better on adolescents in general, uh, rather than maybe just, uh, at least for the speakers who are dealing with adolescents. And we have Petros in the room as well. Uh, anybody who wants to comment on what we need to do better on adolescents and HIV? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks for the question. I think in the setting in Chirad Zulu where we conducted this study, it's clear that we need a tailored model of care, that the current model of care that's used for the overall cohort is working really well, but not for adolescents that are particularly vulnerable and need extra interventions, they need things outside of school hours, they need peer support, they need several of the other aspects that was spoken about with the Myanmar program. And I think that's what's being planned now in Chirad Sulu. Absolutely. I just want to make a comment for, uh, for adolescents. We, we did a study a couple of years ago in, Mala in, uh, in Mumbai about uh, adolescents with drug-resistant TB. So I take the opportunity to take two things uh, from that uh, study and from one of the studies that was presented today. So we found similar bad outcomes among, actually worse among drug-resistant TB co-infected with HIV patients who were adolescents. Like we found high mortality and loss to follow up not just treatment failure as our colleagues from Malawi found. This was actually one of the shock, uh, shocks that we had at the, in, in our project in Mumbai and we tried to reshape. But we didn't have the opportunity to have such good quality, uh, qualitative research as uh, the, the one that I did in, in, uh, in Malawi by Rose and her colleagues. And for me, that's, that was my comment, like a kind of praising such good quality work because when we listen to the patients using qualitative methods and uh, uh, try, try to translate the findings of, of research into reshaping our adherence tools, for example, in this case. So we translate immediate the study findings into action. It's one of the, let's say, gold moments of operational research where really the findings guide our operations and hopefully change and uh, improve them. And that was my comment. Thanks. Yes, I'd like to, to make a, a follow-up comment is that, uh, as it was very clear in Rose's um, uh, work, uh, the issue of judgmental, normative, moral approaches is a very uh, strong issue when it comes to adolescence. And, well, I think the problem and what we can do is uh, take great care that our own staff does not reproduce the stereotypes and normative and judgmental approach, because if MSF doesn't do it in its own spaces, then no one will, and this is the main issue with adolescents. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm 
Hi, Bhagavi Rao, MSF UK. Um, Jerome, excuse me if I'm not saying that right. Um, Almost. <laughs> I wanted to congratulate you on your study in Kamrogachar. And also, it's been brilliant to have Mitchell, the current medical coordinator in the audience as well, being able to say and, and follow up and give an update to say that the results of implementing kind of what your findings of your study have been really successful. And it goes back to Joe Puri's point earlier about the importance of doing research and evaluating the impact of, what, uh, of, of the humanitarian action we're, we're, we're implementing. So here, you found something wasn't working, you looked at why, you changed the operation, the operation is now working much more successfully. Um, why don't we do more of this? Well, that would be actually my plea to uh, engage in way more qualitative research. I think in, in these times, MSF needs to be way more aware of where they actually work. They need to understand the community better and what better way than qualitative or anthropological research. Um, you see the outcomes here, they're already improving this uh, project, so I would encourage all other projects to, uh, to take the same steps. Thank you. Thank you, I'm Himanshu. Well, online harassment of women is a contemporary, unfortunate contemporary phenomenon and also systematically being used to shape conflicts as well. So how, do, how, how does uh, humani humanitarian organizations like MSF see it and where, where do we find ourselves to be involved in this uh, space? I'm so sorry. Um, so I'm just very going, going to very quickly say it's one of the first presentations of its kind. Um, and it was work done by an organization in Pakistan. Uh, I am unaware of any such work in MSF. So I think we'll have to explore this further offline. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here. And we'll go over to the next session. <laughs>